Hi folks, welcome to today's webinar, Starting Your Own Forex Broker in 2016. Uh, this is Dan Perry, uh, again with you if you've been to one of my previous webinars, uh, I've covered various topics in the past. Uh, this particular webinar uh, is really geared towards the entrepreneurs out there uh, in our uh, client base as well as uh, in general, um, you know, the brokerage industry is um, one that attracts many people as far as a business ventures go. In fact, uh, you know, I've spoken to uh, in recent weeks and months, people from a variety of backgrounds uh, looking at the Forex brokerage industry and just the brokerage industry in general. Uh, and I think the reason why it's garnered so much attention um, in the past couple of years is because it's a growing market, right? It's a growing industry. Uh, it's a global industry. So there's participants really all over the world. So depending upon whether, uh, a person or entity interested in starting a brokerage is looking at targeting their individual location or demographic or whether they are looking to do something more expansive than that. Uh, you know, really there's multiple ways to go about it initially. Uh, and even if you have, um, you know, small plans in the beginning, there's definitely been examples of brokers out there now, a couple of, of whom are now publicly listed companies who actually started uh, relatively small uh, didn't necessarily have the ambitions of growing to the point where, uh, you know, in certain cases you have brokers now who have in the hundreds of thousands of clients. Um, but some of them actually got to that point of growth. Uh, and we're going to go into a little bit today, um, you know, how do you, you know, if you are interested in going into this business line, uh, what's involved, what are the costs, um, you know, how do you navigate the initial phase of launching a broker uh, and doing it in a way that, you know, keeps your cost as low as possible, but at the same time puts you in a position to propel yourself out of the gate and have a, a strong first year uh, in the business as you would want to have in any business uh, that you're you're getting involved with. So we're going to cover as much as we can here today in about 30 minutes. Uh, and then uh, if you have further interest in discussing this topic uh, with us individually, uh, we certainly can cover any questions you have, which is definitely natural. Uh, it's, it's, uh, we're not gonna be able to cover every nuance of starting a brokerage in today's webinar, um, but we can cover, I think, the nuts and bolts and definitely give you, uh, you know, a foundation of information to kind of work with and think about uh, and go from there, okay? So getting the broker started involves uh, a couple different aspects. I mean, there's a lot to talk about, but I think the simplest way really to narrow down what's involved, uh, I like to cover one, the technology and liquidity side. So if you kind of put yourself in the trader's shoes for a second, uh, which many of the people that have uh, interest in starting a broker are actually traders. And again, going back to the example of some of the publicly listed companies, if you look at the top brass in those companies, the uh, people uh, in executive management, many of them started as traders themselves as well because they know what traders care about, right? So they're in a good position to uh, relate to traders who would be their clients, okay? Um, but the one side of things really focuses on technology and liquidity, which traders understand, right? Traders uh, understand the concept of a trading platform, um, the, the instruments available on the platform, the concept of liquidity, so the ease uh, of getting into and out of trades, uh, of adding different types of orders, and everything there within. So we're going to cover a bit today uh, the, the technology and liquidity side of things, and then the second aspect is the infrastructure side of the company itself. Uh, incorporating the company, what type of regulation do you go after, if any, uh, bank accounts, payment solutions for clients, uh, so how you take deposits and send withdrawals. So those are really, if, I, if we wanna kind of just start with a certain foundation, it would be those two sides. So <clears throat> getting, just going through the technology and liquidity side, if you are a client of ours, you've seen the X Station platform, so you're familiar with it. Uh, you know, the feedback that we get on the X Station platform, especially from traders who have been in the market for a long time and traded up on other platforms, is that the X Station is hands down uh, one of the more powerful, if not the most powerful, platform on the market? And the, there's a you know variety of reasons for that. I mean, I think fundamentally the fact that the platform was built just in recent years and really caters to the modern day trader is 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 really the foundation of that. Um, 
you know, it's, it's user friendly, it's aesthetically pleasing, uh, it allows for a variety of different layouts, it's web based, so it's very easy to access. Uh, the mobile platform for the X station is, is far superior than to other platforms that I've seen on mobile devices. And then you get into the instruments. And here, I mean, I think that's, you know, uh, from a trader's perspective is, is crucial. You know, over 60 currency pairs, um, CFDs or contracts for difference in a wide array of, in, of instruments. And as a broker, right, you want to be able to offer as many instruments as possible. Now, uh, not all of your clients might trade every single CFD out there or every single instrument out there, but you want to have very wide coverage when it comes to instruments because, uh, if you offer that right that share CFD, for example, which the X Station platform has, that that trader cannot find elsewhere, okay, you've just gained a client for life right there. So you've you've catered very specifically to a trader's need, and the night and the X Station platform has CFDs in indices, commodities, and then it doesn't end there. Also, again, single share CFDs, which are becoming increasingly popular, right? Because what you, there's a few reasons for that. Um, but one of the major ones is margin requirements on major stock exchanges around the world continue to rise. So the ability for someone to trade, uh, you know, a certain stock that they really like to follow uh, and perhaps have traded in the past might become more challenging if the margin requirement to trade that stock on whatever on whatever exchange uh, is going up. It means they have to commit higher and higher amounts of capital just to trade that stock. So if your if your platform offers that same stock on a on a CFD basis, well now you've given that person a very um, strong solution to the issue that they're facing and a way to trade the market or trade that stock, uh, you know, in a leveraged fashion. So X Station platform offers more share CFDs than I've seen on any other platform, hands down. Uh, and so if you have a guy in South Africa or a trader in South Africa, perhaps, uh, or uh, you know, London or Australia. You know, somebody who's uh, in a specific location and following a specific share out of their region, uh, you know, you, the X Station platform is going to offer it. And you never know. You know, some of those traders can be in your top 5% of your clientele as far as, uh, you know, the volume that they conduct on the platform and the amount of revenue per client that's being generated from certain traders. And that's the really fun part, I think, about this business, in my opinion, you know, I've been involved in the market for 15 years now uh, on the brokerage side, on the trading side, on the financial technology side. So I've seen uh, the market really from many different angles. And I can tell you to me, one of the, the more exciting parts from the brokerage side is speaking to a lot of different traders and really not knowing, you know, the, uh, who you're talking to many times and the potential for, um, you know, the potential that you, Every person that you speak to, the, they, the potential that they bring uh, to your brokerage for, through their own trading, through their network that they have, through um, you know places that they've been in the past, as far as the you know the the type of envir trading environments that they have access to, and so uh, that's why I think many people are enticed to get into the brokerage realm because you can, uh, if things if you if you have the right foundation and if uh, things work out well for you. You know, there can be explosive growth in this industry uh, and others have seen that. You know, I don't need to say that it's it's been documented, uh, you know, companies that have been in business for under 10 years going public on major exchange exchanges. In other cases, you know, in just a few years, uh, certain brokers having into the hundreds of thousands of clients. So uh, moving back to the instrument list here, we also the X station platform also offers the X social feature, which if you're new to the platform, is a it's basically a copy trading feature. It allows uh, traders to copy other traders and so and, and not just copy them randomly uh, actually have access to their trading performance so looking at a variety of statistics uh, on the on the trader uh, including their uh, the performance on recent trades uh, their maximum drawdown their average profit per trade their average loss per trade really you name the statistic the X social feature has it uh, and that's that's very powerful as well because uh, every broker from large to small has new traders who come to who are coming to them and uh, sometimes a newer trader if they're if they have a risky uh, if they're if they're very high on the risk profile scale will go ahead and, and, and start trading with perhaps limited experience but many times even though somebody's enticed to the market if they're new they might not be uh, ready to trade for themselves quite yet uh, entirely and the X social feature really fills a need there 
and provide your broker a solution to be generating revenue from uh, a client who uh, might otherwise might not be as active on their own. But X Social actually gives them gives them a portal to get involved in the market, try to make money uh, without having to make trading decisions for themselves. And so you have to position that the right way for people. You know, many brokers do webinars to highlight uh, the copy trading element to the platform. Uh, really get that uh, get that information out there so that the the prospect base, the people that have come to your website and look at your broker, have an awareness that that feature is there. And you know, there's tips that we give you when you launch a brokerage. And I'm going to get into that on the infrastructure side with our marketing. But there's different tips uh, and tricks of the trade that we know work well to help convert. Uh, people that come to your site and prospects and using X social is quite powerful in that regard. Binary options is similar. It's a, it's also really, I think more intended for beginners, but it really just allows people to take an up or down bet on any of the instruments available rather than taking a position in the market where orders have to be managed uh, and, and, you know, that extra layer of um, depth to trading that uh, perhaps a newer trader doesn't want to have to encounter. So, uh, and then, you know, as a broker, the way you make money, okay, and that should not be overlooked, uh, although sometimes it maybe it's assumed, is from a markup to the spread, right? So every broker is has liquidity providers who are streaming through prices on all of these instruments that I just referenced. And the liquidity providers are providing the broker a spread, okay, what we often refer to as a raw spread, okay? And then the broker is marking up that spread by a certain amount. And we train any client, white label client of ours, we train you on this, but basically you, the markup that you apply to any instrument uh, will be based on the demand in the market from traders, right? So certain instruments you can mark up uh, more widely, other ones you want to keep tighter. It comes down to the specific instrument and the sense and the, and the uh, typical sensitivity of the trader to the spread on that particular instrument. So uh, that's more of a, a conversation to have one-on-one -on -one with you as, as you move forward, if you decide to move forward with the brokerage side. Um, but essentially, when we look at how the broker makes money, it's primarily through markups to the spread. There are other areas you can mark up uh, as well, for example, overnight interest rates. Um, so the, the amount, uh, there's a two-day settlement period in the currency market, at least, uh, and so there is rollover interest that applies every day to push settlement out further and further because, of course, nobody here is looking to take delivery of currencies. We're speculating. And so this, there's uh, brokers also will mark up the overnight interest rate. So there's finer details to how brokers make money that, uh, you know, we go into with you because they might not on the surface be very apparent, um, but they're important. They're important to know, like any business uh, you want to know. Uh, you know, how to maximize your revenue, uh, minimize your costs, and really attain profitability as quickly as you possibly can. And so there's more that we can go into there on as far as markups go and, and uh, the instrument list and, and everything there within. Uh, also the back office aspect, you know, everything, there's a very simplified back office that, you know, we train you on, which literally within a week uh, you can, um, uh, you know, manage yourself. So it's very intuitive. And that's another advantage of the X Station platform, I find, because uh, it was developed uh, in recent years. It, it's intended to be user friendly on the back end. So that, which, trust me, is in stark contrast to other platforms out there when it comes to the back office. Uh, and so that really makes you know, your ability to get off and running with the platform and onboard clients and process deposits and, and set up accounts, you know, do it seamlessly. You know, in many cases, uh, if you're trying to keep, um, you know, your payroll contained in the beginning, which makes sense, many times the CEO or the uh, the person starting the company and, you know, perhaps one other partner are really performing all of the operational functions themselves. That's how intuitive the back office is. Uh, with our, if we're consulting you, then, you know, we also can lend a hand, a strong hand there. Um, but I just want to give you some idea of, of how straightforward it is. And now getting into that side, that other aspect that I, I mentioned in the beginning the infrastructure side, operational setup, and payment processing, you know, these are really key areas, right? I mean, if you break it down, effectively, what the broker, how the, for the, 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 the items that need to occur for a broker to uh, earn revenue on a given client is you need to first and foremost be able to accept the client, right? So they have to be able to submit an application with you, with your brokers. They have to be able to deposit funds with your brokers, and then they have to be able to trade. Right. There's basically the three steps 
uh, you know, to simplify things that need to occur. So first off, is your broker incorporated? So, you know, we talked to people at different points in the process. Um, you know, if you already have a broker established, uh, a domain name picked out, a website in process being built, great. Okay. If you don't, that's okay too. You're not far off. All of the whole infrastructure side can be completed within 30 days. Uh, so from beginning to end, you can have the broker incorporated. Uh, you can have uh, uh, registration uh, with, uh, a, in this case, um, you know, looking at this slide, we, if you're using us to incorporate the company, uh, we suggest St. Vincent and the Grenadines, okay? Uh, for a couple reasons. One, uh, this, the incorporation is very fast. Two, they have a body known as the Financial Services Authority in St. Vincent, which is unique uh, for, um, for, for certain countries where people look to get incorporated uh, and also have some type of uh, oversight or financial oversight. Um, very difficult to find without facing a capital requirement. Meaning uh, if you look at the UK, if you look at Australia, if you look at New Zealand, um, which are other destinations, if you look at Belize, uh, these are different countries that uh, brokers sometimes look to incorporate. Pretty much in all of them, you're looking at a capital requirement that you have to put up, uh, which in most cases is in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, uh, as naturally, when you're starting a broker, you're trying to you know, retain as much of your capital as you possibly can to spend on marketing, to spend on uh, you know, your technology costs. Uh, and if you can avoid it, you don't want to have to outlay a, a, a big capital uh, requirement at the outset. And with the St. Vincent solution, it's quite nice because you don't have to at all. There is no capital requirement. There's no annual or quarterly fees as well uh, with the Financial Services Authority in St. Vincent. And at the same time, you have the extra layer of credibility that your broker is likely seeking that you can put on your website um, you know, that makes new clients feel comfortable uh, with your brokerage. So that's why we suggest that solution. It also does allow for the setting up of a payment service provider solution on the site, on the website, uh, which we facilitate. So basically a portal for you to accept client deposits uh, and to send funds back to clients when they withdraw. And all of that can be completed within 30 days. Okay, so it's very powerful, rapid, uh, and gets your broker out of the gate which, and, and making money, right? That's the goal in the early days. You wanna put your broker in the position where you can be uh, earning revenue as quickly as you possibly can. And this solution does it for you. Now, later on, you know, if, if let's say, you know, fast forward uh, one year later from when the broker launches, and let's say you're into the hundreds of clients by that point, and you're growing rapidly in certain places, and let's say, okay, well, maybe I wanna open an office in London, right? The epicenter of uh, FX trading. Uh, and uh, now, now you're talking about getting a physical presence on the ground, uh, to do that in certain jurisdictions, you would have to acquire regulation in, in that country. So, but at that point, it might make sense to do that, right? You have a you're you're achieving a certain amount of predictable revenue uh, every month, uh, and uh, your your client base is growing at a, some type of pace that is consistent. And so then you're comfortable, perhaps going into a certain jurisdiction, getting the right local regulation, opening an office, hiring more salespeople, or whatever the case may be. Uh, most of the time, though, at the very beginning, that won't make the most sense. And so this is a solution that's intended to get your broker up and running and get it profitable as quickly as possible, consistently making money, so that uh, in that in the not too distant future, if you do decide to go up another level of regulation you're financially capable of doing that and you're and you're and you're really steamrolling at that point that's the goal here okay and here's a quick snapshot of the site for the financial services authority in st vincent okay um you know something you can show clients uh, uh you know depending upon the size of your depositors i mean again going back to the point i made earlier that uh, the exciting part about the brokerage industry i find is that again you don't really know the the potential of a lot of the traders that you're talking to um, many times and i've seen this more times than i can count okay you'll have traders who might initially deposit a certain amount uh, with your broker let's say in the you know the low hundreds of dollars 300 500 dollars uh, if they have a, a nice experience a trader trading experience in the first few months uh, or weeks whatever the case may be uh, if they like the platform they like the service that they're getting from the broker uh, you know everything there within 
uh, many times you'll see their second or third deposit be substantially larger than their first deposit. Uh, and you're looking in the, now you're looking at a client who, you know, at first was um, relatively speaking not the largest client, but now they're rapidly growing as a as a uh, as a valued valuable client for your broker. And uh, depending upon the jurisdictions that you're going after, so if you're going after uh, you know any of the G7 countries out there. Um, you really don't know, you know, if you're working with, you know, because, you know, the, the, the pockets of wealth in many countries are very deep, uh, you know, looking at the UK, looking at Australia, looking at New Zealand, looking at South Africa, for example, which has become a booming market for FX. Uh, and you can really capture some really high value clients there as well. Uh, and the list goes on Canada, um, you know, and so we give you guidance there as you grow on how to target those pockets of wealth, target the, the trading communities out there so that, again, you're getting to that point where your broker is consistently profitable month over month as quickly as, as possible, okay? Now, along those lines, which I just uh, hinted at regarding uh, acquiring clients, there's, again, people are coming from different backgrounds, from different points of reference. Uh, and so, uh, you know, it's not a one-size-fits-all approach when it comes to marketing and sales. So some, some brokers have an initial set of clients that they're looking to onboard from their own network, whether that's a, a friends and family network, uh, whether that's a professional network, you know, of five or 10 people uh, or more, you know, that might be uh, a good approach. I mean, and that's, there's, and, and, and that's actually great. You know, if you have an initial set of clients that you can introduce, that's the best way you can possibly get out of the gate because a big part of the business too is referrals. And, um, uh, you know, many, many people like to trade or many, many people like to uh, like to put a certain portion of their disposal income at risk, right, to earn a profit, right? And then, and they might not be doing that necessarily right now in the FX market uh, or the tradable markets. They might be doing it in another place. Uh, but if it, through the through referral networks, people, people get greater and greater exposure to this market and they will, uh, you know, give it a shot many times. And you know the power of the of referrals is is enormous. Again, I've seen it over the years. Um, you know the way the way the way it can really work for you, um, and we give you guidance there. So we have different kits here that we call them starter kits. Uh, again, depending upon how you're looking to approach it, uh, with our advice, we can help you generate leads from countries of your choice, develop a social media strategy optimize SEO. So if you do decide to generate uh, you know, or spend on uh, Google, for example, uh, you know, again, your website, the website that is developed with, if we can design the website for you entirely, if you want to do it on your end, it's it's up to you either way. We can discuss the advantages, um, you know, and, and how best to go about it. But really your website, it's an online business, right? So the goal is to get as high a percentage of people opening accounts with your broker just from visiting your site. Now, of course, many people are going to want to speak to you. They're going to want to chat with you, uh, uh, perhaps even you know e as little as exchange emails before opening an account with your broker. But <clears throat> the, what should not be lost is that the website is intended to act as a conversion funnel. And so it's really an optimization process that you're going through here, starting with generating as much website traffic as you possibly can and that's where the conversion process starts. So when the when as visitors come to your site, what a, what what uh, calls to action are they being presented with, right? And the goal is to convert as many people as possible from an initial call to action. Perhaps that's registering for a demo account initially, uh, getting them engaged with your brokerage. And your and the website is in, it needs to be optimized to. Uh, to generate engagement and to and to optimize engagement, and we have experience in that. So our marketing team will help you uh, if you decide to build a website yourself. That's absolutely fine. If you want a, some pointers from us uh, in that process, uh, or can go as far as us building the site for you. Uh, ultimately, we will optimize it though for SEO and other avenues of gaining traffic and, and leads. Uh, landing page creation uh, is also in there, and there's other points there that aren't on this slide that. Um, our chief marketing officer can have a chat with you about uh, if you progress forward. Sales starter kit is basically the next step. So when you, if you gain a prospect and somebody's signed up, uh, you know, perhaps let's say for a demo account, which is the most common example, what's next, right? What do, how do we, um, how do we take this person to the next level? 
well, there's different things that we can do to help support you in this regard regarding your uh, pre-calls, inbound customer support to high value clients, toll-free number establishment. So getting you toll-free numbers in countries that are uh, your main uh, targets uh, and then market advice to how high value clients. Okay, there's a, you know, the Pareto principle state that 20% in certain industries, 20% of your clients make 80% of your revenue. And in this industry, that actually holds fairly true. And so what that means for you as, as the CEO of your broker, okay, is uh, there's a certain segment, when you get to a certain phase of growth, right, uh, there's every client's important, but there's certain clients who, uh, will be generating more revenue for you than other clients, right? And it's important to be able to identify who those clients are. So if I have 5,000 traders in my brokerage, uh, who are my top 100 traders as far as traders that are generating revenue for the broker, okay? That would be an important statistic to know. And we help guide you on identifying who those traders are keeping them engaged and keeping them uh, keeping their experience as positive as it possibly can be with your brokerage so that you're retaining that client. He's not just a top 100 client in 2016. He's a top 100 client in 2017, 2018, 2019, and beyond. Okay, because the highest value clients, the avid traders, uh, you'll tend to find are traders for life, right? They're not going anywhere, right, as far as the trading the market goes. Where what you want to make sure of is that they remain trading with your brokerage, okay? And so uh, there's different things that we do on the sales side, uh, and we, you know, starting again, similar to marketing, handling it entirely for you if you like. But also as you grow and most likely build out your own sales team, customer support team, uh, as far as training goes, to make sure that your team on on, on site with your broker. Um, you know, is, is managing things in the, in the highest possible fashion so that the retention uh, aspect is going well. You know, some of the larger brokers out there who are publicly traded and who have to and disclose a lot more about their brokers than they ever had to before they were public companies, you see some really fascinating statistics out there um, that I think are worth noting. You know, one of them that I've seen is uh, brokers, you know, if you look at uh, some of the brokers right now who have into the hundreds of thousands of clients, uh, what you see month to month is that uh, 60% or more of their deposits each month come from existing clients, right? Uh, less than six uh, or 40% or less of their deposits each month come from new clients. Now that might not sound that surprising, but it's, I think it's a statistic, a statistic worth noting. Uh, and I think the reason why is because, you know, those loyal clients that are out there for your broker, as I mentioned earlier in the webinar, their deposit sizes tend to increase time, time and time again. Um, you know, their performance is another story. If they're, if they're, but if they're, if they're, uh, if their experience is positive and you can keep them engaged, especially in the, the that critical, you know, three first three to six months uh, of life as a client of your brokerage, you know, you really, you know, that whatever you're paying to acquire that client, call it ten or twenty dollars. You know that the ROI, the return on that client can be enormous. Okay, can be enormous um, if you consider the fact that you're now potentially gaining a client who can be trading with you for years, for years. And that's why this industry can be so lucrative if done the right way. Okay. So with that, we're going to pretty much wrap it up. We're nearly out of time. Uh, if you have any questions please feel free to email me at dan at currencyhouse.com. You can also uh, get a hold of me on Skype at ch dan perry. Um, you know, if I, I, I tend to, I try to reply as quickly as I possibly can, uh, as long as I'm in the office at my desk, but either way, I will always get back to you with your questions. Uh, and if you want to have a chat over the phone, I'm happy to have a discussion with you, uh, you know, at your nearest convenience. Uh, I'm in Europe at the moment right now, so I'm working primarily uh, during uh, London business hours. So, with that, we're going to wrap it up for today. Uh, I hope this was informative uh, for anybody who attended. And uh, if you'd like a recording of the webinar, I'd be happy to also send you a recording. Uh, and we look forward to speaking to you very soon here from Currency House. Have a great rest of the day, folks, wherever you are, and look forward to speaking with you soon. Take care.